Hi. I am grabbing Siobhan. Hello. Hi, Haley. Hi, Carrie. Hey, Holly. Hey, Siobhan. How are you? I mean, get the volume all the way up so I can hear you. <laughs> Brilliant. Hi, everyone. We'll give everyone a minute to hop on. You got on quick. You must have been waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Jump on. Nice. <laughs> I want to share with you the EPA website because when you're going back into the salon and we're doing all this disinfection cleaning, I want you to make sure that the wipes you're choosing to use in the salon are actually effective for COVID. And it doesn't matter if you're choosing to use the rejuvenate, which if you are, that's great. That's what I'm choosing to use. I think they're fantastic. I want you to type in the EPA registration number for the brand that you're choosing to use to make sure that it's effective for COVID, what you're using in the salon. And if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching this right now live, I'll share this link later in the comments and I will share this link on my Facebook and I'll share this link in the caption on YouTube. It's the EPA website for letting you know if the product has been approved by the EPA as effective for COVID. And you can find on all the disinfection wipes, no matter what brand you are using, you can find an EPA registration number on their packaging. And so on the Rejuvenate packaging, it's right down in the bottom corner on the front of the container. And so if I go to this EPA registration website, because just because I love the product and I personally choose to use this product, those of you that know me know I'm still skeptical, even though I like this product. Oh, yay, she's already back. Let's grab her. Even though I choose to use this product because I love it and think it's amazing, doesn't mean I'm going to take their word for it that it is on this EPA website. I'm still going to type it in for myself. So you would just grab that EPA registration number that's on the package and scroll down this website until you get to that spot where it gives you the place to put in that EPA registration number and you'll type the whole thing in. So you notice that the registration number has a little dash in it, some of them, and you type the whole thing in, including the dash. So mine says 74559-3, I'm gonna type that in. 74559 dash, where's the dash? Three. And then you would hit return. And it's going to think about it. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Doo, doo, doo. <laughs> and then since I typed in rejuvenate, it's going to come up. It's going to tell me a little bit about the product. And then over here, if I go all the way to the side, it's gonna tell me how many minutes it has to be on the surface. And it tells me that it was approved by the EPA as effective for COVID in March of this year. And you can also, I covered up the label because it's not fair to show the brand, but you can also grab the wipes from around your house if, you're, if you decided, you know, hey, um, I'm curious if the wipes from that I'm using around the house will work or, you know, the wipes that I use at my house are cheaper. I can grab those at Walmart. I'm just going to use those in the salon. Make sure they're effective for COVID and look for the EPA registration number on the container and look those up on the website. So I will put that uh, link in the comments at the end of our live and I will put that in the YouTube caption if you're watching this on YouTube. 
So with that, we are gonna go ahead and get into the information because that's what's important is we're here to make sure that you have the information that you need and answer the questions that you have and basically give you anything and everything that we can to make sure that you're successful. And let's start off with the difference between high level and low level disinfectant. And we do know that in some states like Texas, it, the, for those of you that are in the states, um, the state will not allow you to use disinfectants that um, have to be, um, will not allow you to keep your disinfectant for more than one day. That's the wording that I'm looking for. And um, they're forcing you to pour it out even though it's a high level disinfectant because of their ignorance between the difference. And so we do understand that something like HLDA is not cost effective. However, we do wanna provide the difference for your benefit just for your personal knowledge. And Virox is working on talking to states like that just so that for the future, hopefully there can be changes. So we are aware of things like that just so that you know. Yeah, for sure. So uh, just to start off, so yeah, I'm from Virox Pro Beauty, so we manufacture the Rejuvenate Disinfectants. So for those not familiar with Virox, um, we offer disinfectants based on our unique accelerated hydrogen peroxide technology. Um, yeah, and as uh, Holly mentioned, we have a range of disinfectants. So when it comes to high level versus intermediate or low, um, really what that comes down to is the different levels of disinfectants depends on the application and what they're designed to kill. So for example, if you look at your surface disinfectants, they're designed to kill germs on your high touch surfaces. So that would be like chairs, countertops, workstations. Those are typically low or intermediate level because there's a less concern of a risk uh, when it comes to infection. But of course you can still have, you know, bacteria, viruses, fungi, especially you know, right now the virus that causes COVID-19. So it's really important to properly clean and disinfect, but you're only going to a lower intermediate standard. So that means you're killing germs like, yeah, bacteria, a TB claim, that's gonna be really important uh, for your foot bath surfaces as well. So that's why you're looking for an intermediate level. That also means you're getting efficacy against bloodborne pathogens. So HIV, hepatitis, just in case there is some kind of blood burn uh, potential contact. Now, when it comes to high level disinfectants, these are very unique. Um, what that is, it's specific to tools. So you would never use a high level disinfectant for a surface application. It's solely for those tools that pose a higher level of risk. That would include like your reusable nail tools, nippers, clippers, because they might come into contact with non-intact skin. And again, they pose a higher risk of infection, especially when it comes to your services. So that means a high level disinfectant, if you don't have an autoclave, if um, you know, your state doesn't mandate, uh, most states don't mandate uh, sterilization for tools, you could use a high level disinfectant. That's the closest you would get to sterilization. It's a step above most state requirements. Uh, a lot of them only state you need intermediate or low level disinfectants when we're saying, hey, you should go a step above for tools and use a high level. Um, so yeah, with our HLD-8 solution, you can reuse that for up to 21 days. So instead of an intermediate or low level that should be daily dumped, ours has a reuse period. So again, that makes it unique. It's ready to use. There's no dilution. It helps from a compliance standpoint. Um, and again, we are educating state boards on high level disinfectants because we're bringing our education and knowledge from healthcare, trying to raise the standard for tool disinfection. And we're trying to educate them on why maybe the blue liquids out there aren't sufficient uh, for tools. And then we do have a question. Let me scroll back and catch it. Where did it go? <laughs> Uh, is this preempt for Canada? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so we are yeah, North American wide. We also sell uh, internationally. So our professional beauty line in Canada is called preempt. Yeah, so similarly, we offer surface products based on accelerated hydrogen peroxide and we offer tool solutions as well. Cool. And then I learned this week, I had someone that caught my PPE video from the grooming field. So for those that would catch this video that are not in the nail field, what website would they, would they use to 
find your products for different fields so that they could, if they're in the vet industry or the grooming industry or the medical industry, to find your products for their industries? Yeah, definitely. So our technology, Accelerate Hydrogen Peroxide, we really formulate that to meet many different market demands. So yeah, it's available in veterinary markets. It's very well known in healthcare. That's really where our background came from. So just the, the acceptance shows that it's such an effective technology and why it's well accepted in all industries, including professional beauty, is that safety and efficacy component. So most disinfectants, they can be really effective against germs, but they're not safe for the user or for the environment. They might be toxic or irritating. So we really have that balance. So it's important in animal health, it's important in human health and environmental. So you can go to our corporate site, which is virox.com, and you can see all the markets we're a part of. And yeah, rejuvenate specific to Pro Beauty, preempt specific to Pro Beauty Canada, and then we have a, many other brands who've really kind of accepted the technology. So it's amazing to see. <laughs> Cool. So virox.com is what they would use to find their specific industry if they don't do nails and they want to figure out where to find this product for the industry that they use. Exactly. Awesome. Yeah, yeah I discovered that my daughter that works as a vet tech uses the wipes at the veterinary oh. clinic that she works at. I was like, yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, we've even That's seen a cool recently. feeling. <laughs> recently with uh, coronavirus, you know, our technology has been trusted for use on the cruise ships that have been hit very hard, um, hospital settings. So, I mean, it, it really shows that it's a credible, uh, well-accepted technology, which is amazing. Yeah, when I brought in HLDA to the salon, my client, um, I have some clients that work in hospitals, and they were like, uh, score? That's what we use. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Awesome. It's a really cool feeling when people already know about the products because they work in the medical field. Um, we kind of covered with talking about the website, but let's cover it again because we've had a lot of people join us. How do I know if what I use is effective against COVID-19? Yeah, so perfect. So when you're opening your spa or salon, of course, that's going to be one of the first questions you'll expect to get, especially from clients right now, because they're very aware. So in the US, what you're looking for, it's called the Emerging Pathogen Rule. Um, so that's enacted with disinfectants. So depending on the type of virus, there's different claims a disinfectant is able to uh, make. So the disinfectant should be a hospital or broad spectrum disinfectant, and it has to be EPA registered. You should be looking at EPA registered products anyways. Um, in a professional environment and for disinfecting claims, it has to be EPA registered. It will also uh, must show efficacy against a non-envelope virus like polio. Um, and then also the EPA is allowed some other disinfectants if they're effective against human uh, coronavirus and they've shown efficacy. But really when it comes to you, what you can do exactly is check out that EPA registration number on your product label. So on the label, you can search that registration number uh, on the EPA list end site, and it will tell you if it's expected to be effective against SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus that causes COVID-19. Yeah, so perfect. And you might not see your brand name up there, so that's why it's really important to go by the EPA registration number, not by brand name. And I'll post the link to this website in the comments after the live. And if you're watching this on YouTube, the website is in the caption. Perfect. Yeah. And for uh, Rejuvenate users, so you'll find that our EPA um, registration number is on that list. So, you know, you can be confident when you're using Rejuvenate that you are protecting uh, against, you know, coronavirus in your, in your setting. And are these products available in the UK? Right. So we have other products available under different brands. Uh, so again, you can go to the virox.com website and kind of find your, your niche market. Um, and you can always like contact us directly and then we can see what brands are available. But Rejuvenate is U.S. specific and Preempt is Canada specific. And then we have other brands as well. So, OK, so virox.com is how they find it in different countries. Exactly. Awesome. Then what is disinfection contact time? Yeah, so that's a great question. This um, is so important, especially right now. 
Exactly. And I think a lot of people, I mean, even, you know, before you enter the field, it's like you see all those advertisements when it comes to the Lysol or other products where you expect disinfection to be immediate. Like you don't think about it. You're like, oh, I used a disinfectant. It worked. Right. And, you know, you spray and walk away. So, yeah, what's important is when you're reading your product label, it will say bactericidal, it will state a claim, and then there'll be a time associated. It could be one minute, it could be 30 seconds, it could be up to 10 minutes. And that's the contact time. So that's how long the surface actually has to remain wet to be effective. So if you're using a product that might dry quickly, potentially like an alcohol type solution, if that dries quickly on the surface, you might have to reapply because that surface has to remain wet for whatever that contact time is. So that's why it's important to use a fast acting solution where you simply wipe or spray, leave to air dry for the contact time, ensure you've reached the contact time and don't pre, you know, a lot of people, what they do is they spray and wipe. You've just dried off all the disinfectant. Yes. So like either spray and walk away or spray and ensure you're meeting that contact time. Otherwise you might have to reapply. So that's a really important uh, thing to, to be aware of. Yes, and I grabbed some wipes that I used to use around the house before I turned into a snob and started using rejuvenate <laughs> around my house as well as the salon. And I was reading the directions and it says to sanitize, which we know is basically just to clean it. And it then went on to further talk about to disinfect and so disinfecting is what we think we're doing when we're really like getting rid of the germs and so to disinfect it says to disinfect hard non-porous surfaces wipe surface to be disinfected use enough wipes so it's even saying you may have to use more yeah. than one wipe for treated surface to remain visibly wet for four minutes and i'm super guilty like before rejuvenate and I took the little rejuvenate class online, I would, you know, prepare chicken or hamburger or whatever on the counter and then whoops, I got some on the counter, get the wipe out, wipe the counter and figure I cleaned it. Yep. You know, I just wiped it off with the wipe and it's the special wipe from the commercial and it's the name <laughs> brand. I don't even buy the generic ones. So for sure, I just disinfected the counter. And then, you know, now after I took the online course, it's like, I should go fish that out and read the instructions. And sure enough, it says I need to use enough wipes that the counter stays wet for four minutes. It took quite a few wipes to keep the counter consistently wet for four entire minutes. Like I set a timer on my phone <laughs> and it took me a while to keep the counter wet for four minutes. Like that's a really long time. Yeah. So that's another thing that we really need to pay attention to in the salon is making sure we're keeping our table wet or our lamp wet and now that we have to disinfect so many areas like the surface of our e-file or you know basically everything you touch now in the salon your gel polish handle and bottle that you used uh, any art supplies the br the handles on your brushes and um, something that we talked about last time were our nail tips these are going to have to stay wet for that full contact time. So depending on what you're using, they're going to have to stay wet for that full amount of time. And as promised, the last time we talked, I used the rejuvenate spray. <laughs> and after an hour of consistent wet time, the colors and the art seem to be okay. The only thing I really noticed is a little bit of my foil kind of disappeared on some of the art ones but there's no breakdown in color if you're really worried about your um, nail sample for your choosing a color i would maybe think about putting them in picture frames so that you only have to wipe off the picture frame instead of letting clients like put them on their finger to choose colors like they used to you know, it's a new normal. Things are going to have to kind of change for now. So mm -hmm. even if you have lots and lots of swatches, it may become time to 
think about how to let them choose their colors in a little different fashion if you don't want to go through and either spray those and keep them wet for five minutes if you're using the spray or wipe them and try to keep wiping and wiping and wiping them if your wipes are supposed to keep them wet for four minutes or I use the rejuvenate wipes and I would still need to try and wipe them and keep them wet for a minute um, in my salon I don't let them choose their own color I ask them what color they're in the mood for and I help kind of select the color for them so that would be another option is basically trying starting to train them to let you choose the color because you are the color expert that's the purpose of them coming to you you're the expert so kind of maybe in this new normal take the opportunity to train them to a different way of thinking they come to you for your expertise definitely yeah and, and in regards to contact time as you're saying about keeping it wet like think about the client turnover so it's really important to just read product labels, know what you're working with, know the contact times, and again, think, do I need a product that has a shorter contact time so I'm not waiting and having to reapply? Does it stay wet? Like, those are the questions you should be asking. So just, yeah, definitely read your product label before reopening, and then you'll be, you know, prepared with all the answers, so. Yeah, because really when I looked at how long and how many wipes it took me to keep my counter wet for four minutes <laughs> and then compared that to like, okay, in theory, that's cheaper at Walmart compared to my rejuvenate wipes. But my rejuvenate wipes only had to keep the surface wet for one minute and it only took me one rejuvenate wipe to keep the surface right. wet for one minute. I'm not yeah. really sure that you would be saving money. So look at cost per service when you're thinking about things like that versus okay the container cost me this much really break it down into cost per service and not cost per container like think like a business person and not an artist and really take those things into consideration let's look at best practices for disinfection yeah, so there's kind of when we talk to protocols, there's a couple, I guess, best practice areas. So when it comes to surfaces, especially now, uh, again, contact time is important, reading your product label. From a best practice standpoint, as you're talking about the new norm, everything's changing. So it used to be, you know, best practice, ensure you're properly cleaning and disinfecting after each client. So, you know, when you have that client turnover period, we're wiping down all the high contact areas, which is gonna include, as you said, like your UV, um, like lighting, any kind of magnifying glass, the treatment uh, workstations, all of those high touch areas have to be, you know, wiped down between clients. But now there's also the need when it comes to surface disinfection, what about your non-treatment areas? You need practices in place to ensure that you're actually properly cleaning and disinfection reception areas. Um, you know, what do you have when you're like point of sale equipment, you know, in between clients, like you need to actually look kind of outside of just treatment surfaces and look at all the other high touch areas to protect you and, and your clients. Um, another thing that you might potentially be looking at is PPE, even when you're doing your surface disinfection. So again, you need to look at your state on what they're guiding. But when it comes to our products, you know, there's no gloves required. They're non-toxic, non-irritating for the wipes or the sprays. So you really don't need to wear gloves, but then it comes down to how are you protecting yourself during this outbreak? So learning what your PPE measures are gonna be is gonna be important even when it comes to surfaces now. Then the other section we look to is tools. So again, they're high risk, they're um, you know, more at risk for infections. So the best practices is following those protocols when it comes to thoroughly pre-cleaning. It doesn't matter what kind of tools you're using or how you're reprocessing, you have to pre-clean before immersion or you have to pre-clean before sterilization with an autoclave. So with the pre-cleaning, uh, what we see is kind of some, you know, maybe mistakes is uh, when you're pre-cleaning, you need to use a detergent and, a, you know, clean water, pre-clean your tools, and you always have to dry them. Regardless of the process you're using, you need to dry your tools, especially if you're using a high level disinfectant. If you're not effectively drying your tools, over time, you could potentially dilute that solution. So that's really important. So drying, then immersing, if you're using a high level or some kind of immersion solution, then when you're removing them, rinsing, thoroughly drying, again, really important to ensure your tools stay properly disinfected and storing them in a clean area. 
Um, now more important than ever is going to be also designating what's your clean tools area and your dirty tool. You really need to ensure those are always effectively separated, labeled. Now is a great time when you're going back to just look at your processes and say, hey, what can I improve? Uh, how can I make it you know, clearer to clients about that I have their care in mind? Is it using, you know, 10 cards that we offer that say, hey, this surface has been cleaned and disinfected? Is it, you know, posting your protocols and, you know, educating clients on your practices? So, you know, you need to be well versed as well on what you're currently doing. And it helps from a, there you go, there's a perfect example of the 10 card. <laughs> but it helps to build client trust because we all, you know, we have to be prepared with the answers, especially when we're reopening. Uh, you know, clients are going to be asking us, so in the u.s i know you can go to viroxprobeauty.com and click on where to buy and it takes you to universal which is the exclusive distributor in the u.s if you live outside of the u.s how do you find the distributor for your products yeah so for canada you can go to viroxprobeauty.ca and that's for the preempt products and again where to buy we sell through a company called cbon uh, and then again, if it's an international, you can contact us directly either through our customer service or on our corporate site. If you contact us, we can help kind of direct uh, where to go. Again, what's really important with disinfectants and why we have brands and it seems a little complicated is just because of that regulatory body. So in the U.S., you have to use EPA registered disinfectants. That means they meet the U.S. standards. In Canada, we have Health Canada standards that we have to meet, so they're DIN registered. In the UK, you can have various different standards, so that's why it's always kind of confusing with brand or distributor. Uh, but viroxprobeauty.com, viroxprobeauty.ca, and then for anything else, we're always here to help, so you can contact us. Awesome. And how do they acquire tent cards? Yeah, perfect. So we, uh, you, again, you can reach out to us and we can offer the files for printing. We'll also be hosting those on our website soon. So you can print them yourselves. Uh, and then we're also offering them through Universal in the coming weeks. So uh, through Universal, you can kind of get your own tent cards. But again, you want to be proactive. You can print them yourself, be ready to go. Um, and then there's also other, you know, client communication tools, as I was saying, like maybe printing the protocols to have on hand, printing log books, you know, how do you show your clients your, your current practices? Um, what, the wipes are out of stock. Shell, are they out of stock at Universal or where are you trying to purchase them from? And Siobhan, do you know anything about that? Yeah, so we have been working like very hard. Uh, we understand the importance of, you know, salons preparing to reopen and stocking up on their supplies, really to ensure client safety. Um, so we've been providing a substantial supply and like a continuous supply of wipes, other, you know, are ready to use and surface products to our distributor Universal. Uh, they will not be, at, I mean, if they are out of stock or slightly back ordered, I wouldn't expect that to take longer than a couple of days. Uh, so we're really pushing those, um, those products to Universal. In regards to HLD-8, which is the high-level tool solution, uh, there has been some impacts when it comes to supply. It's just because it's a specialty product, but we expect, you know, Universal to have it up and running by next week. So, I mean, we are doing all of our efforts to ensure everyone's ready. And, you know, when people are stocking up, we're, we're trying to replenish as soon as possible. So. And she said she is having trouble getting it in Canada at all of her suppliers. Okay, yeah, so what you can do at that where to buy section, CBON's our master distributor and they oversee all of our distribution. Uh, so you can contact us or you know, to contact them or our customer service and we can definitely help uh, help find you. But yeah, same, same issues in Canada. <laughs> Everyone's eager to get ready, so. Do the wipes ever expire? Yeah, good question. So all of our products actually have a very long shelf life. So again, it depends on what solution you're looking at. Uh, it's usually two to three years from date of um, manufacturing. But again, look at either the ready to use, the wipes, the concentrate. Uh, what's a really nice feature about the concentrate as well, which is unique, is that once diluted in a spray bottle, that's gonna last you 90 days. So really there's no concern when it comes to kind of stocking up. Um, you know, you've, you will definitely use the product before it, it expires. They have very long shelf life, very stable. So there's no issues. Awesome. Um, and then the certification, give them yeah. a 
like sneak peek at the certification. <laughs> I've posted pictures of my certificate and something that I've done with, I took a picture of myself with my certificate and I've actually posted it on my salon Facebook page and I've posted it in my Instagram story so that my clients can see that I have a disinfection certification to kind of give them that extra security that when they're coming back, I have some extra education. I haven't just been, you know, stuffing my face and sitting around in my pajamas during quarantine. I've been getting extra education that will benefit them when they come back. Perfect. Yeah. So we offer the online course. So it's a free course. It's about 45 minutes it's on our rejuvenate website. Um, it's really great kind of hands on. It will tell you about uh, the microorganisms you might face in your spa and salon, you know, best practices and kind of common watch outs. So it's a really nice, like comprehensive course. At the end of the course, you get that awesome personalized certificate, which is really nice. You can show that to your clients. You know, you can print it off, have it uh, on hand. You can share it on social media. We constantly are getting tags and, you know, kind of call outs. If you, um, you know, tag us on social media, we'll repost you on our account too. It's a nice little like community. And again, you're really showing that you're proud of your current practices. Again, that you've refreshed or kind of stepped up your game. Uh, and yeah, like, you know, talk about it on your website as well. Talk about it in like your Instagram bio, you know, share all of the education you're doing. This course is one piece, but, you know, share all the things that you're kind of doing to elevate your services. It's a great way to differentiate yourself. Yes. I printed mine on like a shiny cardstock style paper. It's so gorgeous. <laughs> That's amazing. And, and with the certification, it's on the Virox Pro Beauty website. Is it also on the Canada website? So Canada, we're actually offering through our distributor, um, they're doing webinars. So they're mm -hmm. regularly scheduling web webinars with like smaller groups. Uh, so you can reach out to them and then they can kind of add you into one of those webinars. Awesome. But yeah, we're all trying to figure out the, uh, you know, the best way to do all that online education, right? So is it a webinar or is it through the module? Uh, but again, you would still get a certification at the end. Oh, that's so cool. And then if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll post that link in the caption. Um, and then we have a question, is the Prevention HLD-8 the solution comparable to Barbicide for tools? Yeah, great question. So it's actually, uh, when we talk about, you know, the levels of disinfection, we were saying a low level. So a Barbicide, your general Barbicide concentrate is actually a low level disinfectant. So what that means, it's a daily dump. Uh, it has to be diluted. Um, you know, again, there's the uh, kind of the variance of having to dilute it yourself. There could be some issues. Uh, and it's only a low level disinfectant, so you're not getting a TB claim. So you'll see some states require tuberculocidal activity for tool immersion. And that's where you're looking more at a barbicide plus. So what makes our solution unique with HLD-8? It can certainly replace barbicide for tool solution. Uh, but it's a high level disinfectant, so you're getting better germicidal efficacy. It's going to be closer to sterilization. It's also still highly compatible with all of your, you know, stainless steel professional tools. Yet it has a 21 day reuse. So you're pouring that in a soaking tray. You're good to go for up to 21 days. So you're not concerned about daily dump. It's nice to kind of reduce labor, but it's also nice to reduce that environmental impact of dumping every day. Uh, our solution is readily biodegradable as well, so there's no concern there. And yeah, overall, I mean, it, it, with a ready-to-use solution, you're pouring, you have the confidence that you're good to go. So it can certainly replace a barbicide, but I think there's a lot of, you know, added benefits that the high-level disinfectant brings as well. And we have one person that did the course last week and says, thank you for that. And awesome. another says, would you recommend that each member of the staff takes the course? I personally think it would be very beneficial for each member of the staff to take the course because then it isn't being diluted from one person sharing it to another and it doesn't become well um, opinion based. Everyone is taking the course so everyone has the facts from the source. How would you feel about that? Yeah, so we kind of have two options when you go through the module. Uh, I certainly agree there's a lot of value in going through as an individual. I know some businesses uh, or locations have also like, kind of had the staff communally do it together, kind of open the conversation. But as Holly's saying, the main thing is getting everyone on the same page. 
So like make sure everyone understands their responsibilities, especially now with the new protocols in place, if you are enforcing, you know, more strict measures, who's responsible for cleaning and disinfecting the reception areas? Who's responsible for, you know, properly dealing with PPE? Like, do you have those clear kind of guidelines being set? Uh, and yeah, getting everyone on the same page. So if you're doing it together, I would recommend it being an open discussion and you can submit a facility name or doing it individually. And then kind of, again, connect afterwards with your peers um, and just kind of get their opinions is the best way to go. Is the, we have a question, is the spray the same as the wipes? Yeah, so they're the, they're the same formula. Um, again, really comes to convenience of the wipes versus the RTU. The RTU is great for your larger surfaces, maybe like your foot baths, if, and if you just prefer spraying. But the wipes are super handy, um, you know, for those high touch areas, especially in treatment and non-treatment rooms. Um, you know, guests would feel comfortable using those as well. If you offer them, you can have a canister on, on the counter. So, um, yeah, I mean, they're the same formula, but it really comes down to the preference, the application. Cool. And we have one person with a great suggestion. She puts it in her calendar to remind her to change the HLD8 every three weeks. And so that's a great way to keep yourself on schedule. I have a little thing on my disinfection tray. I just put a little sticker and write myself a note with the date. So there are are definitely easy ways of reminding yourself when to change that solution. I love not having to mix it, to just dump it out of the jug and it's good to go. That makes me <laughs> super happy. <laughs> exactly. You're not like, have I measured it you know, properly and mixed it? You're just confident you're good to go. So for sure. Yes. And um, what are some ways that we can show our clients our disinfection practices or market our sa- ourselves and our disinfection practices to our clients. Perfect. Yeah, so it's the combination of everything we were kind of speaking to, right? It's the in, in salon communication. So is it, you know, having an open conversation with your clients, explaining, hey, like if you have any questions or concern on our practices, reassuring them you're taking these new measures. Um, again, then there's the digital aspect as well. You can send emails talking about your reopening practices. You can, you know, promote on social media and your website, your new certifications. Um, and then also there's all the other marketing collateral. So is it having that certificate posted? Is it having the protocols on hand, the tent cards showing, you know, again, I cleaned and disinfect this surface. So there's so many great methods, but yeah, don't be the one who's missing out on communicating. Because again, it's going to be the new norm. You have to communicate. So learn what works best for your, uh, you know, your facility. You can go on our website. We'll, um, we're looking at launching a new kind of like reopening page with all the great content and resources that we've kind of collected. So if you, um, you know, subscribe to our blog or sign up with us, we'll keep you up to date. Uh, but yeah, we're really trying to help make like a nice package of content that you can be sharing. But really, there's no bad way to do it. <laughs> And the blog is really (laughs) beneficial. I found the blog to be really helpful. And if you just go to the website, you'll find the blog. Um, Can they use Rejuvenate as a hand sanitizer? Yeah, good question. Uh, So the Rejuvenate wipes, they are, um, you know, non-irritating, non-toxic. You don't need gloves. Uh, However, they're not designed for uses like an antiseptic or a hand sanitizer. So they're certainly safe to use in that manner, but I mean, it's not designed for that. So it's really designed for your hard, non-porous surfaces. Um, I mean, that's a great, you know, suggestion when you're looking at PPE, when you're looking at disinfectants, you know, you need to restock on hand sanitizer. You should have that available to clients and to yourselves. Um, You know, hand hygiene is going to be really important, you know, before and after client services. Even if you're wearing gloves, we all know gloves don't replace washing your hands after or using a hand sanitizer so you should always have those you know products on hand cool and then we have a question since the wipes are back ordered in canada can she go ahead and use the rejuvenate spray for now and is there a different dwell time 
Right. Uh, so yeah, when we were talking about regulations, so unfortunately, uh, you wouldn't want to use a U.S. or EPA registered product in Canada and vice versa. You wouldn't want to use a Health Canada approved product in the U.S. And that's because if your inspector came along or if you got any questions on your products, you need to ensure in the U.S. you're using EPA and Health Canada, you're using DIN to meet your regulations. Um, so you wouldn't need to do that. Again, you can contact us and we can help, uh, you know, get you preempt in Canada. Um, and there is different contact times. So because they are slightly different formulas, they're slightly different bodies in Canada, you're looking at a three minute contact time for your wipes and your RTU, five minute for the concentrate, which would be similar to the US. And we offer the high level disinfectants in Canada as well. So it's a very similar uh, portfolio. But again, there are some nuances because again, Canada versus US kind of restrictions and regulations. Awesome. Um, is it safe to wipe screens? Some of us use phones <laughs> and iPads for our payment methods. I know that I use my phone in the salon. <laughs> and so if you are getting signatures on your phones, etc., can we wipe them down with the wipes? Definitely. They're perfect. They're perfect for all your screens, all your mobile phones, <laughs> all those high touch areas. You're not going to have any compatibility. So everyone that's watching, what's really, really important, if you use the wipe on your screen, what do you have to be sure of? Contact time. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Just let it air dry. <laughs> it has to be wet for how long? <laughs> If you're in the US, we got to <laughs> clarify. So this brings me to when we let it air dry, there's going to be streaks, which is going to be fine on our phone screens until we get home. However, when we clean our PPEs, like our masks and our safety glasses, how can we get those streaks off once they've air dried and they're disinfectants and they're disinfected? Do you have any suggestions for that? Definitely. Yeah, so with our solutions um, and with most products, when it comes to disinfectants, um, you know, you also need a good cleaner. So our products are based on accelerated hydrogen peroxide. So it's a mix of detergents for the cleaning ability, which is really important to remove soils and oils. But then also we have a disinfectant based off of the hydrogen peroxide. But with that combination, because you're getting one step cleaning disinfection, you're also going to see there might be some detergent residues or soap that remains. And that's usually on, yeah, shiny surfaces, you might see it, um, or again, your mobile phone. So a really nice way, once you meet the contact time, <laughs> then you can usually, uh, you can use like some clean water, a damp cloth, and just wipe off that soap residue. It's totally inert, it's harmless, there's no active residue that remains. Just from an aesthetic standpoint, you know, you, don't, you might want, not want to see some of the little soap <laughs> residue. So you can just, yeah, wipe that off with uh, some damp water after the contact time. <laughs> yeah, it was more like the safety glasses or the face shields that it's like, we kind of need to be able to see the nails without the streaks. <laughs> That's going to be really important going back to work. Uh, we talked about marketing and branding. I feel like since some of our clients work in the medical field or the veterinary field or they have friends and family members in those fields, that it can be important with like our certificates, taking the online course or with printing out tent cards from the website, it can be important for actually branding ourselves in the salon as using these products. What do you think? I completely agree. Yeah, when we speak to that new norm or, you know, what the new standards of business really are, uh, especially when it comes to being client focused, it's all that communication, making them feel safe from the moment they walk in the door, making them be a trusted, um, you know, like reliable customer is, again, that constant communication. It doesn't have to kind of, you know, become your primary <laughs> communication, whatever your, you know, your true trait or skill is. It doesn't replace your amazing nail art. It doesn't replace maybe your more eco-friendly driven um, tech. Like it doesn't replace any of that messaging. It's just, hey, here's another thing that I bring to the table. Here's another way I really have like your safety in mind. 
um, and how I'm kind of maintaining my practice. So again, it's that online messaging, it's social, it's in person. It's really just being open to the conversation. Again, that course will be a great way that you can be kind of become a little bit more comfortable as well if you have any questions uh, and then communicating it to your clients, definitely. I kind of feel like branding yourself with Virox is adding another jewel in your nail professional tiara. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> Do any of you have any questions? Because Instagram is soon going to cut us off. There is an hour limit to lives <laughs> and they are soon going to shut us down. So I want to check for questions before we get forcibly cut off. We have a little bit of time for questions, so I wanna make sure that we get them in while we have some time. Yeah, if you're thinking about questions as well, um, feel free to reach out to, you know, us on, on Instagram. We're here to help. Uh, if you want to ask about products, availability, any kind of specific questions you might have, yeah, follow us on uh, Instagram and, yeah, reach out. How safe is this for home use? Yeah, so, I mean, it's designed for a professional application, um, but, you know, again, it's non-toxic, it's non-irritating, it can be used, I mean, I use it in my kitchen, um, so it's definitely safe for home use, um, so if you want to become comfortable with the products now, I mean, that's a great idea to kind of test it out before going back to your, you know, your business, um, so yeah, it's perfect for home use, but again, it's really intended for that, you know, professional location. Um, is it safe if she has toddlers at home? Definitely. What's really interesting, actually, again, about our technology coming from healthcare, um, you know, we're one of the key choices when it comes to like children's hospitals, um, you know, maternity wards. So, I mean, it, it is one of the safest disinfectant technologies you'll see out there. Um, so, yeah, of course, around children, you know, I mean, don't put it in their mouth. <laughs> like, don't, put, don't let anyone put anything in your mouth. But, uh, yeah, wiping down all your countertops, you're, you're really good to go. Yeah, with everything, um, you know, I did kind of start to switch over and start using the Rejuvenate Wipes at the house. I'm like, you know, if I'm protecting my clients with this, I feel like my family is worthy of this as well. <laughs> <laughs> and so That's if I'm going to be a clean snob at work, I should probably be a clean snob in my home. <laughs> <laughs> and so I started using them at home. <laughs> Oh yeah, I've been using them for grocery carts. I mean, I'm using them everywhere. But... <laughs> right? It's like, yeah. Mm, yeah, when in March when I had to travel before, you know, everything was cut off, it was like at the beginning of March and I was on the train, I'm like taking my little travel pack of rejuvenate wipes because I save those every time I go to nail <laughs> events and they give those out. So I have like this little stash of them and <laughs> I'm like taking them out and wiping down everything in my surroundings on the train. And the person next to me is like looking at me like you're a freak. And it's like, mm, but my space is clean. <laughs> I think we'll see more of that in the coming days. Yes, I think that people will be doing that more and more. Yeah, and we so. have those handy packs available now for sale as well. So, um, you know, if you want a nice little soft pack to carry around in your purse or wherever you go, yep, they're available. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think those would make great welcome back gifts for clients. I'm going to have to get on the website and get those. I love that. Those would be Perfect. awesome welcome back gifts. I like that. <laughs> I'm so going to have to get those now. <laughs> That's what I'm doing as soon as I get off. Oh, here's another question. How much of the concentrate do you use in the pedicure tub? Perfect. Yeah, we didn't really touch on foot baths much. Um, oh, let's do that. We do have a little, I think we have enough time to do that. Yeah, so really when it comes down to foot baths, outside of the product you're using, you need to know what type of foot bath you have. So there's two kind of types. You have your basin style or non-circulating. Um, you know, they might have detachable magnetic jets and other components, but there's no piping. They're not physically piped in. Um, with those, you can treat them like a surface. So you can simply spray or wipe. 
Uh, and just, you know, do the pre-clean, very important for foot baths. You're going to get buildup of like soils and oils. So do a pre-clean step and then do a disinfection step. Uh, for the pre-clean, you can use the diluted concentrate in a spray bottle. Um, you could use the ready to use. And similarly, you could use the concentrate or the ready to use for spraying. Again, wait for the contact time and then you can simply rinse off. Uh, the concentrate in that spray bottle application uh, is 1 to 16 dilution. And then when it comes to circulating, that's a lot more of a complicated process. We know that a lot of people are moving away in the market from circulating because of that piping, biofilm can build up, microorganisms can build up, it can actually lead to a greater risk of infection. So if you have those circulating units, then it's very important that you have proper protocols in place. So again, pre-clean, physical pre-clean, but then you actually have to fill up your uh, basin with the appropriate amount and ratio of disinfectant solution. So you need to know how much your foot bath actually holds and then how much water you need to add versus disinfect it to reach the jet line. And you have to push that solution through the jets. So you would actually turn on the machine and run it through the pipes. Um, so it's a lot more labor intensive. You'll also notice that's gonna be a lot more product if you fully actually have to fill your basin. So that's why a lot of people are moving away. Let's pick something easier, faster turnover. It's also a safer option. So they're moving towards basin or non-circulating. Uh, in those circulating units, again, you're looking at a 1 to 16. So you will be using a lot more product. And it's going to take you a longer time. Regardless of what solution you're using, you're using more. And there's more time in between clients. And there is a chart on the jug of the concentrate that kind of lets you know per gallon how much you need, how many ounces of the concentrate you need per gallon. Yeah, exactly. Versus like if you're diluting into a spray bottle or in your foot bath. Yeah, we have all those ratios online as well. So that's, that's a perfect reference. Cool. And do I have... That is a sheet... So there's a little, is this on the website, this little reminder for basins? Yeah, so we have all the different protocols. So we have surface protocols. That's an example of one of the foot bath protocols. So we separate circulating and non-circulating. Uh, and then we also have the tool protocols as well. So those are really kind of the, the main areas, surfaces, foot bath, tools. What are you doing? And now with surfaces, what surfaces are you including? It's not treatment, it's everywhere. <laughs> Cool. So if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put more specific links and break them down for you down below in the captions. So you can kind of, if you're looking for something specific, you don't have to go hunting through the website. I'll break them down for you in the captions. And for the other countries, I'll kind of pop those down in the captions for you as well. Any other questions? Are you guys feeling a little better about going back to the salon? Has this helped some? <laughs> I know it's a little scary and hopefully having some control over knowing your disinfection protocols, knowing, hey, my surface needs to be wet for this long and that's effectively actually disinfecting it, knowing going to that EPA website and typing in that EPA registration number and pulling up your product and actually seeing, hey, my product has been registered on the EPA registration website since March of 2020 as effective against COVID and things like that kind of helps you feel a little more comfortable with going back to the salon and being confident. Absolutely do a practice run. If you can get into your salon, if you're allowed to go back into your salon, go in there and do a practice run through your disinfection and cleaning protocol after a client and time how long it takes you because you're going to need to add that much time on to the end of your services you are not going to be able to do your normal scheduled service times when you go back it's going to need to be different you're going to need more time for disinfection than what you're used to because you're going to need to disinfect more sur surfaces than you're used to if you have a overhanging light you're gonna have to clean that entire light surface you're gonna need to clean the chair that they sat in you're gonna need to clean the entire surface of your table not just where their hands were at you're gonna need to clean every single thing that touched the top of your table every single item that you touched 
your phone if you got your phone out for payments, your credit card machine or gadget that you got out if you got that out for payments. Every single thing you touch, you're gonna have to disinfect. So you need to take those things into account that it's gonna take you a little bit longer. It's been a month, two months, maybe three months by the time some of us can get back into the salon since you've done full services. So your service is gonna be a little slower. Your clients are gonna be awkward. They're not going to have had their nails done for that long. So the service isn't gonna go as fast as you're used to it going. Clients aren't gonna be used to wearing a mask. They're gonna be touching and adjusting their face like this through the whole appointment. Every time they touch their mask, they just contaminated their hands. So you have to stop the service so they can wash their hands or so you can reapply hand sanitizer because they just contaminated themselves. And so the service is gonna take longer. So you're gonna need to allow more service time. So you're gonna have to take all of this into consideration and book yourself more time. So absolutely do practice runs. Practice wearing your PPE. See how many, how long it takes you to wipe down your, PP, your PPE with your wipes. See how long it takes you to clean your face shield and keep it wet for a minute if you're using Rejuvenate. If you're using a different type of wipes, how long does it keep you, take you to keep your face shield or your safety goggles wet for a minute. Um, see what you can use to wipe the residue off and get them back to being shiny. Make sure you use a soft cloth so you don't scratch them. All of those type things you need to take into consideration for your practice runs. Do you have any suggestions for the practice runs? Yeah, I think that's a, a great idea. Yeah, if you can get in and kind of do like start your deep clean in a sense and get yourself all prepared. And yeah, look for those key areas that you should really be focusing on now. Outside of the amazing things you've already been doing, and I'm sure you've always been keeping clients safe, but it's all those added precautions, PPE, hand sanitizer, those non-treatment areas, you know, it's a lot more involved. <laughs> And again, hopefully you can still keep, um, you know, and maintain that, that client trust and experience. So still make it a great experience for your clients, educate them on what you're doing. And uh, I know, as you said before, this is like the most engaged community and, you know, you guys are kind of at the forefront of infection prevention, I think, in, in, the, nails, uh, in the nails industry. So just continue your great things. And then uh, again, keep, continue advancing what you're doing. It's only going to be as awkward as an uncomfortable as you let it get. So if you're comfortable, practice wearing your mask around the house for days, wear it all day long. So you get used to wearing it for a full day in the salon because the more comfortable you make it seem, the more comfortable your client's going to feel with you because they are definitely going to need some nail therapy after all this <laughs> quarantine. <laughs> Any more questions for Siobhan? You guys have had some great questions today. We really appreciate your time. Um, will you have to have your nail tables further apart? That is going to depend on your state regulations. I'm guessing you're at least going to have to make sure there is a six foot distance between them. But that is definitely going to depend on your state regulations. Do you have any suggestions for that? Yeah, I think as you said, every state's going to be different when it comes to the social distancing, you know, the other measures uh, when it comes to how many people per facility. So, yeah, really staying up to date with your with your state guidelines. I think if everyone is good for questions, we will wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you, Siobhan, for joining Thank us. You. It was so <laughs> awesome to have you. It was so much fun. Love all the information that you shared with us. We so appreciate your time. We so appreciate your knowledge. And we so love Virox Pro Beauty and yeah. Virox and Oxygen Price products. This was so great. And if you're watching this on YouTube, all the extra information is in the captions. Thank you all for joining us. If you have any further questions, you can definitely go to virox.com. If you're in the U.S., viroxprobeauty.com. If you're in Canada, viroxprobeauty.ca. <laughs> 
and we will let you all go and find some more nail lives out there in online land. <laughs> Thanks for your time, everybody. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.